Yeah, we lie. Let's see you pull up and put it in park, man. Yes, sir. Let's see you pull up and put it in park. Can I say the magic words? You can say the magic words. Prayers up, blessings up. Prayers up, blessings up. <laughs> now pull up, man. We about to do an interview. Pull man. up and put it in park. We got Jabez over here on the Smoky Mirror podcast. Yes, sir. I can't wait. This is part two. Truly. We already had Jabez on one time, and it Truly. was it was magic. And yeah, and now, oh wait, no, wait. Let me pause real quick. I didn't know that Jabez lost 100 pounds until the first podcast. Yeah. He dropped that on me and I was like, "What, bro? You got to share you got to share the information." So now we come back on the podcast. He's a best selling author. He has a whole book out. Yeah. I read the book, bro. I love I love everything about it. I really want you to give me the inspiration behind it, which, you know, obviously I know, but tell people what you really wanted people to get out the book and then we'll get into a little bit in it. Let's get it, man. First I want to give you a shout out, bro, for real like I appreciate you. I met my brother we was uh not too long ago. My life was different, bro. Like I was out doing petitions. Mm-hmm. Um, am, am I good right here? You can bring that up to your, yeah. Bring that up to. Where I was you out. Feel I was. I just want to make sure the sound is good. Justin, we good. Yeah. Sound is good. Yeah, I was out doing petitions on uh in Winwood. Yep. Man, how long ago? That wasn't that long ago, bro. How long ago was that? Was Probably, that like January? I think it was January ish. You understand? Top I was the out there doing petitions, and my brother was out there, and he and I was selling the um brilliant the minor brilliant shirts, shirts. Yeah. And he supported. And then we just kind of kicked it off. He got his own brand, Scut. So, you know, I put him down with where I was getting the shirts made. And we yeah. just we just linked up. You know, I linked him up with Billionaire. And he was telling me about his podcast. And um, I love what Scut stands for because it sounds uh, real provocative. So I'm like, bro, what's up with the Scut? What is that for? <laughs> but it's uh, spreading knowledge using tactics. Yes, sir. And so that, that made me respect you a lot, bro. Mm. Like, you probably might not never know. Like, when I, because that's what I represent. My whole thing is... Tell me how to do it. Like, right. there's a lot of people that's up on game, and then when I ask them for like the particulars, <laughs> it's like they go to tap dance around the answer <laughs> and see like like it be crickets. You feel me? Right. So it's like spreading knowledge using taxes. I I respect that. So um, it's respect and it's love, bro. I just want you to know that. Hey, you know absolutely, I appreciate and, you that. You know, I just wish and I pray for blessings and for for this podcast to grow because I know where your heart at. Yes, sir. And I know what you represent. And so let's get into it, man. Let's but um, it. yeah, so with the book, right? It was like, man, because when I, around the time when I met you, I was going all the way in with my clothing brand, Brilliant Minded. Right. It's a designer brand. And um, man, like, you know, our, our slogan is uh, believe in your brilliance. And our mission is we're using Brilliant Minded as a tangible platform to connect with over one million brilliant minded individuals to pool our skill sets and resources together to entice over 1 billion people into the light of morality, healthiness, happiness, unity, financial literacy, and abundance. Mm. So it's a designer brand and we're using the brand to accomplish that. So it's much bigger than the clothes, but you know, when nobody don't know you and you grinding something, it's like, you know, I was on overboard grind and I was making money, but not that much. You know what I'm saying? And so, at the same time, when I started uh, the concept of Brilliant Minded and brought that together, I was writing the book and because um, I bought a course, shout out Billionaire PA. I bought a course from Billionaire PA, how to write, um, how to, the whole book game. He put it in the course and, and made it real easy to understand how to self-publish, how to conceptualize a book, go through the process of writing the book, market the book, the whole thing. Yeah. And um I just followed the formula. That's why, I just like I said, that's why I like spreading knowledge using tactics. That's why I rock with Billionaire the way I do because he explained tactics. When he sells his information, it's valuable because it's tactics and like the actual people that you can holler at, holler at how much things cost, everything, like the details. Mm-hmm. And so I just followed the, um, the formula. And so I wrote the book. I picked the book to write off of his advice because I, I was thinking about making an autobiography, but he was like, bro, nobody don't know you. Mm. So he's like, an autobiography is for like celebrities. Like when you get right. on, you know what I'm saying? Like you got to put your mind in, a, you got to put yourself in the in the shoes of, the, of your consumer. Like you got to bring them value. So if you're going to write a book, make sure that you bring in the consumer value. So I was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. So I was already like in my mind, I had already had like the book laid out. You feel me? So I was like, I had to go back to the drawing board. And then I went to really thinking. And that's when it came to me like, I lost a hundred pounds. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's a big thing. Like that, you said it like it's like a, like a side note. But yeah, like, pounds. That's it, crazy. But it's crazy because that was a long time ago, though. Like at right. at the time when I you know wrote the book, it was like seven years ago when mm. I started the journey. Mm-hmm. It took me maybe two and a half, 
three years to get the weight off. And um, I didn't know. I wasn't thinking about it. I just, I was tired of being fat. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> right. I wanted to get back. You feel me? My whole yeah. life, I was an athlete. athlete yeah. And then I kind of like, in my third, like my late 20s and early 30s, I blew up. And I love how you. I love how you said your wife was like, "Babe, you getting titties?" Yeah, my wife called me out. She poked out my chest and laughed at me. Said I was getting titties, man. Look, let me show you. Cause no, the, the picture is crazy. Picture. I didn't even believe it when you told me. I was like, "Ain't no way you was two sixty, bro. No yeah, way." I was two hundred and sixty pounds. I could not I believe it. Fat. I don't know where the it's at the. It's at the, at the end of it. But anyways. I'm, I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I gotta find them. Here you go. I'm, let me pull the picture. You keep going. But anyway, so picture. yeah, so um, that's why I decided to write the book, man. And so I, I, I wanted to make it easy to understand what I did because I realized the way that I lost the weight was different than what a lot of people are doing. Can I see that? Look, that's me. Look at, the, look at my face, man. Look Zoom in on the face, man. No way. Yeah, yeah, bro. bro. Isn't that no. crazy? Yeah, man, that's no, me, no man. Way. Look at my head. Look at the inflammation in my face. Look at my eyelids. I was, you know, I was two hundred and sixty no pounds. Way. That's my wife. Shout out yeah. my wife Nicole, man. Shout out to Nicole. Yeah, man. I listen. Yeah, now look at him, happy, smiling, healthy. Yeah, bro. It was. It was. Uh, <laughs> wow, right. That's a, that's a new person. <laughs> no, literally, literally. And so what? What happened was, um, it's not hard. It's not. We overweight from going through the process, right? Because the first thing I did was I stopped eating fast food. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I talk about all this in my book, and I, I bring everything together and make it real. Most people read the book in one day, and they, it, I'm, bro, my phone is full of people telling me their life has changed. They're never going to eat the same. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's oh, so yeah. it's so easy, though. Yeah. That's, why, that's why I wrote the book the way that I did, and I compare it in the book because me, I'm the type of person... I don't want a bunch of big words and make make you look smart to explain something to me that I don't mm -hmm. understand. Talk to me in my language. Right. So that's was I wrote the book from that angle. But it was like um I just I realized when I look back on it, when I was really trying to figure out, you know, what should I write about? And then I thought about writing about weight loss. I realized bingo. That's going to set perfect there. Yep. Yep. But uh, I realized what it was for me. It was I was unaware of how I got overweight. Mm. So it was like back then, bro, in 2008, when, during that time when you seen that picture, mm -hmm. I knew in my spirit I was overweight because I was eating too much fast food. Mm -hmm. You couldn't tell me. and You couldn't tell me. I just knew that. Like, Because yep. I, I remember seeing the documentary Supersize Me and- it broke down the fast food game. And and then I seen this probably four years before I started eating different. And I kept eating fast food. Mm. But I knew I shouldn't. But it was just like convenient. I was being lazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. whatever. I was eating the fast food. It was cheap. And um, so when so so the night when my wife poked at me and laughed at me, she's like, babe, you getting titties. I like went in the bathroom <laughs> and I was like, no, because I was like dumb emotional, bro. Like, and then at that time too, I was tripping bad, bro, because it was like I had I had a bad addictions. I was smoking heavy weed every day. Mm. I was drinking alcohol a lot, like a lot, bro. Like once the sun started going down, I start drinking, mm. like pretty much every day. I was living in the projects, stressing. At that time, the M's was out. I was popping M's mm. too much. Mm -hmm. I was tripping, bro. I had the kids in the house. I was, bro, I was in a dark place. I had went from making a couple years, making over 100000 you know, easily in, in ways that I knew I shouldn't, mm -hmm. to being broke and my wife holding me up in the projects, bro. Yeah, I know that didn't feel good. No, man. And so then it was like, at that time, I just, when she did that, but, but that, I was, because I was talking about my emotions. I was so emotional, bro. Like, because mm -hmm. it was like I, I know it was all the chemicals and all the ways I was eating for a lot of, and I, and I feel like as men we don't talk about our emotions enough. enough. Like that, if you could be inside me in that moment and have, would have felt my emotions, it was crazy, bro. Like mm -hmm. I felt sad, mad, uh, uh, self conscious, uh, uh, like like anxiety, right? Like. Like, I can't even put all the words together, but, like, I started getting, like, chills. Like, I started feeling like I was about to cry. Mm. I, there was so much. When she thought, like, in her mind, she was just, like, joking. clowning. Like, yeah, you feel me? Joking. But to me, it wasn't that in that moment. And so, like, I got up and went in the bathroom because I felt like I, was, I didn't want her to see me cry. I felt like I was about to cry. And, she, and so I was like, I was like, I was like, 
Hey, that's rude. Like, I was like, <laughs> I was like hey, you, you being the- hella rude right now. She, she laughed. She like, babe, chill. I'm just clowning. I'm like, what you think about getting with another nigga, son? Like, <laughs> oh, she like, no. yeah, bro. Like, I, like, bro, I showed my, like, I showed myself. Yeah, like, was- and she was, and she was like, babe, chill. Like, <laughs> and I was, I was like, nah, man, not like you need to chill. Like, but, but that's why I went in the bathroom. Yeah. And when I was in the bathroom, I was like, I looked in the mirror. And when I looked in the mirror, this was like, this was the day that changed my life. Because mm-hmm. when I looked in the mirror, I realized right when I went in the bathroom, I closed, the bathroom was this big. We're in the projects, the Pine Island projects, the bathroom this big, the roof, our ceilings was just about this high. <laughs> like our ceilings, I could reach up and touch them like this. Yeah. So I, I went in the bathroom, I'm looking, I shut the door behind me, I'm looking at the mirror right here. And I realized right when I looked in the mirror, I was holding my stomach in. Mm. And I talk about this in my book. I talk about it in um a, a lot. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to keep talking about it because... That was a moment that I was able to realize. I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm like, damn, you lying to yourself. Mm. And like it hit me so like I I believe it was the creator of all things. Hallelujah. I believe he it was a moment of clarity. Like I looked at myself and I realized I was sucking my stomach in. Like, and I'm like, damn, you li-. like, and then I realized I've been doing that. Mm. So then I realized. I wasn't allowing myself to see how much I had was letting myself go when I looked in mirrors. You're trying to hide it. I was hiding it from, from myself. Yourself. So I was lying to myself. Mm. And so then I remember I just like, just let it out. You know what I'm saying? And then I was like, damn, I just look different. Like I realized how much different. And then I was like, I just, so this is how I look to other people when I'm not thinking about holding my stomach. And I'm like, mm. damn. And then I'm like, this is how my wife looking at me. And I'm like, I just snapped, bro. So I was like, that's it. I'm done eating fast food. I'm like, watch, babe. I'm done. And she's like, damn, you in there still thinking about that? I'm like, hell yeah, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I'm done, whatever. So I stopped. So then it was in that moment, and I write about this in my book because I got a chapter about mindset. I realized how important mindset is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And we're going to tap back in. If y'all want to see this uh, interview, the whole interview, um, Tell them where they can see it yeah, at. Yeah, go on YouTube, type in Smoky Mirror Podcast. Jabez, he's he, he the number one guy on there. You'll see our original, and then I'm going to post the new one on there, too. You're right. You're going to give him a 50% off code on exactly. there, too. Exactly. Huh? I'm going to give him a, a discount code that he's going to put on this uh, episode of his uh, pot, of his uh, YouTube channel. Yes, sir. And then y'all could, it'll be 50% off. It's going to ride. So this is just for his followers. Um, and if, if you go and check it out, you'll be able to get the 50% off. I'm actually running a 50% off deal deal that you'll start seeing posts up on Instagram and TikTok until uh, Monday at 12 o'clock um, a.m. But yeah, man, Instagram, man, it's love. It's love. It's love, man. Y'all be easy. Prayers up, blesses up. Prayers up, blesses up. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, no, I love being tapped in with Jabez because whenever we working, it's it's always work. We getting straight to it. Yeah, get straight to it's it, just man. Just good, just good get energy. Straight to it, good man. vibes. Yeah, that's live, man. That's live, bro. So, 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 I was at the part where I was like, the okay, mindset, we the mindset, because I got a chapter about this in a book about mindset. Yeah, and I made a decision. Shout out to everybody pulling up, man. TikTok, we live right now, man. Shout Let's out go. my brother, uh, Jordan. Where we at, bro? We at the Smoky Mirror Podcast, man. You can check me out on YouTube, Spotify, mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts, Smoky Mirror Podcast. And then uh, my boy Jabez said he's going to give you a 50% off code. So I'll put that in the description when bingo. I post it next week. Bingo, man. And if it, it, bingo, man. And if anybody want to grab this, right, grab the book right now. I'm running a 50%. I'm so gassed up because we done sold over 1,000 books, man. We're on our way to 2,000. Uh, man, like, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm waking up the money in the Shopify account. Like, I'm tripping. That's so so it's like, so I'm doing a 50% off. To celebrate the success, I'm doing a 50% discount. TikTok, I'm talking to y'all. 50% discount until Monday midnight. So anyways, we picking. I was just going live on the gram. Now we're going live on TikTok. We're knocking out three birds with one stone. Let's go. Huh? <laughs> so, okay, so, they don't know like, nothing about we're that. We're halfway through the interview already. So if you want to see the whole interview, you could pull up to his podcast and check the whole thing out. Anyway, Tap in. Okay, so now I was, um, we were talking about mindset, right? Because this is the biggest, because you know, I got a goal to help over a million people get down to their natural body size and stay there for life. If you don't know me, my name is Jabez L. Israel, and I have a goal to help over a million people get down to their natural body size and stay there for life. This is it. my book, Life Matters, So Let's Eat Like It, and this is what we're talking about. Yes, sir. So we're, now we're talking about mindset, right? If it, And this is the thing. That's why I wrote about it in the book. That's the most important part. Yep. And I know this for a fact with me, because I was 100 pounds overweight, and 
everything started changing when my mindset shifted and I made a permanent decision. Mm. And this is what the book is about. It's about helping you get back to your natural body size, but that's just half of it. And then it's staying there for life because bro, I've been up in weight and down in weight, fluctuating. And I see it so much in our, in our culture, in our society. Sure. People look at weight loss. Like uh, they, it's like you get, once you get to your goal, they go back to their old ways. We got to get out of that mindset. It have to be a permanent decision to eat foods that benefit you. Mm -hmm. So this is why I say like the best, and I did not even know this when I made the decision to never eat fast food again. That was the decision that in time, and I stuck to it, because what happened was I lost 30 pounds mm. and then I stopped losing weight. So I went from 260 to 230. It might have took me, I don't know, four months, five months. I went down 30 pounds. Like every day, I was wearing myself every day. Just from cutting out fast Just food. Just from cutting the fast food off. I, I was, I, my wife and kids, they would go get the food. They'd be like, hey, you want some? I'd be like, nah, nope. man, I'm done. I'm telling you, I'm not going to never eat it again or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I would make a sandwich or whatever. I make, I cook my own dinner. And um, I started losing weight. So I went from 260 to 230. And then I leveled out. And it might have been six months, bro, that passed. I didn't lose no more weight. Mm. So I, And then I wasn't eating no fast food. Yeah. So I was like, what? So this is why this is where this is where when I'm talking about mindset and when I'm talking about a permanent decision, this is how important and how valuable it is because I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. I didn't go back to eating fast food because I was like, I only lost 30 pounds, like I might as well eat what I want to. I was like, there's something that I'm missing. This is how I was thinking. And then I it was one day, bro, I never forget. I um I was sitting, I was right there in the Pine Island Projects, man. I was sitting there. By myself, my wife went to work. I was I wasn't barely making no money. Mm. My kids was at school. I was in the in the um right there by myself. You know what I'm saying? And I I never forget because I had um roll up a joint. I went to the gas station. I got me a six pack of beers. I'm remember now. I'm drinking alcohol every day, beer every day, and you smoking every day. I stopped eating fast food. But I'm not connecting all the dots. Right. Wait, wait, pause right there because I want to tell everybody what I learned from the book. When you drink alcohol, your body cannot break down fat like it usually does. When you drink alcohol, what happens is your metabolism slow down up to 75% for up to 72 hours. Mm. So then this is if you have over three drinks. So think about that. That means... When you drink up, and me, when I drink, I drink, and I would get hella tipsy. Like, I would drink <laughs> to the point where a lot of people probably would black out, but I'd still be functioning. Because you was used yeah, to Yeah, I drank so much, like, it was bad, bro. But it was Damn. like, um, so imagine that. So I'm drinking like that every day. And then, when you know, when you drink, it's like, you want to go get something, like, you want to make get, with some, some substance. Right. Like, I want some rice. I wouldn't go get the fast food, but I would, like, I would eat, like, a uh, some tuna salad or something heavy, like, some bread, some sandwich, something, some, you know what I mean? Some chips. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was eating like that when I was drinking, not connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'll never forget this day, though. I roll up a joint. I'm smoking. I, I, I got my beers. I'm drinking. We was with Comcast, and we switched to AT&T. And so it was like we like the day before this. And so it was like a new um you remember back in the day with cable was like it's like a new screen that you gotta go through yeah. to like pick what you wanna watch or whatever. So I was getting used to the new little system or whatever. So I was just kicking it. I was looking for something to watch. And they had a section for documentaries, right? So I go to the documentaries because I'm in the documentaries, and then they had a, a documentary about and I don't remember the name of this. I talk about this in the yeah, book. Yeah, you say you don't know. I that swear, either. bro. I feel like they just. I feel like they just cut it. Like I feel like they had to erase it, for real. Yo, like you know, like <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, like because I know I ain't tripping, bro. Like I said, the, when I say they explained it so good, mm. they broke down enriched foods and processed foods masterfully, and they mm. made it so easy to understand mm. and how it's how how our body turned it straight to fat. So it break down the enrichment process. So I'm sitting there smoking. I'm watching the um the the the, the documentary. Eating a tuna right? sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> drinking white beer. Bread. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm watching the documentary, and then it go to breaking it down what enriched food is, right? So it's going it's going into it. It's saying enriched food is when it's like you can enrich the grains. So it's the rice, the bread, the flour. Um, and then everything that flour makes, which is a lot, like you, know what I mean? you got the bread, the pastries, the pasta, mm. you know what I'm saying? And, um, so it's like, you can enrich these things. And so, um, enriching is when, is when through the, it's a process. So through the process, they strip 
the nutrients out of the food it's lost. The nutrients is lost through the process. And then what the explanation is, they add synthetic nutrients to the nutrients that's lost. And then what happens is <laughs> when we eat it, our bodies recognize it as a foreign object. It's not natural because the nutrients that was in the grain is gone. And now synthetic nutrients that's made in the lab was added. And so our body turned it directly into fat. Mm-hmm. So it break this down in the documentary, right? And then it break down everything that can be enriched, the bread, the, everything I just said, the pancake batter. And so I pause the documentary. <laughs> so I'm like, as I'm watching, I'm like, okay, I eat all those things. <laughs> and I'm like, damn. And I'm like, and I'm thinking about how I stopped losing weight for like six months. So I paused it. I went into the kitchen. I looked in the pantry. We had white bread. We had, I'm not going to call out the brands, but we had the white bread and we had the honey wheat bread. Mm-hmm. And the white bread was made with bleached enriched flour. Ooh. And the honey wheat bread was made with wheat enriched flour. And then the rice, we had two types of rice. We had the white grain, long, long grain enriched rice. And we had the parboiled enriched rice. And then we, um, then I looked at the pancake batter, we used to do like the traditional breakfast all the time. That's another reason why I was over with like the sausage, hash grits, browns. You know, the hash browns, mm-hmm. grits. We used to do grits. My, my grits is so raw, like the grits um, and, the, and the pancakes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I look at the pancake box, enriched bleached flour. I look at the um, grits, enriched cornmeal. I look at... Um, I look at the, uh, we had the little Debbie snacks made with enriched flour. I'm like, like no, everything. I'm like everything. Bro, I took everything out and put it on the counter. It was the counter full of enriched products. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I was just in there laughing. Like, I felt like I cracked the code. I'm like, I'm done with all this. I'm in there talking to myself. I'm, I'm, I'm like, watch, watch. I bet I start losing weight. I was in there getting happy. I was like, I'm done with all this. And so yeah. I, what I did, the rice got a substitute. The bread got a substitute. You can make your pancake batter from scratch. So I just substituted everything that was re- enriched and replaced it with the natural versions. Mm-hmm. And the weight started coming off. Mm. So that was one of the things, that was one of the things that helped me. And then and then it's the um pr- the heavily processed, all these chemicals. When you start to read the ingredients, this is why I'm always stressing read the ingredients. They train us in the weight loss game to be aware of the nutrition facts. Right. So the protein and the carbohydrates and count your carbs and your calories. But let's keep it G. What does a protein look like? <laughs> You're going to tell me count my, count, count my calories. So I'm counting calories. So you give me a piece of bread and say count your calories. How do I look at the bread and count them? What I got to do? I got to look at the nutrition. I got to take your word for it. Mm. And then I got to start doing math. It starts getting complicated. Right. Calories and carbohydrates and da 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 and then, and then, and, and this is another thing, the misconception about all of these things and protein, especially people, I've been hearing this a lot because I stopped eating meat. I barely eat meat anymore, but this is after I already lost the weight. People ask me this a lot. Well, if you're not eating meat, where do I get my protein? This is how I know we've been brainwashed. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Google search for yourself. Do fruit and vegetables have protein and get the shock of your life. You'll see is going to say, although all fruits and vegetables have protein, some have more than others. Mm. So the so the meat that we eat, where they get their pr- protein from? The fruits and vegetables they eat. We eating cows, we eating chickens. The main two things we eat, cows and chickens. And they eating the vegetation. So they get their protein from the source and then they get into their meat and then we get secondhand protein. Mm. But that I ain't even I ain't even go into that because I know where I was. I ain't go into that in this book because I know where I was when I when I was overweight. I wasn't ready to stop eating meat, bro. I yeah. wasn't ready for that. That's why I really like how you put in the book. It's like anybody who's a beginner can pick up this book and say, "Hey, you know what? I want to eat healthier. Where do I start?" Boom, there um, it is. Um, and you, and you can still eat the meat. You can still eat your rice. You can still eat your breads. So that's what the book is all about, man. No, I love that. Uh, the part of when you said mindset, this is one thing that really stood out to me is when you said you don't have to. We can stop eating just for taste and eat for what the food can do for us, and then make that food taste good. Exactly, man. That's why I say all the time: you have to love yourself more than the love that you have for the way food tastes, mm. and you have to because that's what I'm saying. When it, when it comes to America, when it comes to the way that. It's, it's like, this is the world. It, like, if we do what we see the people around us do, so we do what our parents, our, gu- our guardians, our friends. When I was growing up, 
this is deep. When I was growing up, I would eat when I felt hungry. So I was eating to get rid of the feeling of hunger, what we call hunger, right? And then I would choose what to eat by what I felt like having the taste of. Mm. So when I felt a way, I would think about what do I feel like tasting? And that's as deep as I looked into it. And when I look, that's how everybody around, bro, I've lived in six states and I write about this in my book. That's why I'm so, I'm so blessed at the time. It was, I was, I didn't see it as a blessing. I'm going to be real with you. Cause I moved around a lot. My, 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 my story is crazy, but it was like, Oh, it's great. We, we did a two we, hour. We yeah, went into like, it the first. The yeah. First episode. So it was like, I, it was like, I didn't see the blessing. Now I'm starting to really see it because I was able to see so many different versions of life. And in all the versions of life, it was the same thing. Like, Everybody was eating the same way. We eat when we feel hungry, then we go grab what we've got a taste for. Mm. But then we're not looking at it from the, from the, we wasn't taught, okay, when you feel hungry, eat something for the energy it's going to give you. Start to, and then food is good for so many things besides just energy. If you're feeling foggy headed or if your memory's getting bad, go look for some blueberries. Go look for some avocados. Start eating avocados. Whatever you're trying to get better at, there's foods, herbs, and fruits that specialize in making that part of your life better. Mm. By the creator of all things, he put it right here, man. It don't get no better than the source, man. Everything that we got going on, like all these synthetic pills and vitamins and, oh, well, what about your vitamins? What, what, what kind of multivitamins you take? I hear that a lot. Yeah. And it's like, I get it because I used to think the same way, but it's like, I, now it's like, I, I just see it. It's like a trick, man. It's a trick getting played on our minds. And so it's like, where do multivitamins come from? Well, they come from the fruits and the vegetables or animals. And they go through the process of extraction mm -hmm. and bring it to a powder form. And then so you might be getting something, a vitamin, and you might have the 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 you might have the uh the discipline in yourself to not eat pork. But then you go grab a vitamin that got pork in it. Or you go grab gummy bears. A lot of people don't know gelatin is pork. That's crazy. So when you eat gummy bears, you're eating the pork. Or if you go get some beef uh, uh, sausage, a lot of the beef sausage is pork intestine. The the the, the lining of it that's is intestines. still pig intestines that's on it. So you in your mind, you're not eating the pork, but then you got the parasites that's swimming through all that. I'm about to say because the part, the piece of the sausage they put in there is not the prime cuts. That's just oh, what they getting off the butcher's boot. Yeah, <laughs> man. And together. then and then it's like the longer I've been on this path, bro, mm -hmm. the more I've been connecting my emotions, my thought process, my blessings, the uh, the people I'm choosing to hang around, um, what I'm choosing to consume. I'm I'm like I'm starting to connect everything. To what did I eat today, yesterday, the day before, the day before that? Like I'm taking note of all this. Like I've been doing this for like three years, like just out of curiosity. Right. So that's how I know it's it, that was God putting this through me. That was Yah, man. He was putting it through me to be looking at things like this. And so now I have this type of awareness. And so now I'm starting to see the connections. Like I give you an example. Like I barely eat any meat now. Right. It's a restaurant called Perry's Steakhouse. You ever been to it? I don't think I've been. You ever been to Perry's, bruh? Never. Bruh. You like steak? I love steak. Let me tell you something. It's banging. Bruh, if you go to Perry's Steakhouse, you'll thank me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to call me. I want you to call me and be like, bruh, I went. I'd be like, I'm, I would be like, bruh, that's your fight. Listen, <laughs> Perry, one time for Perry's Steakhouse, I got to get back in the kitchen over there, bro. I heard you were an amazing cook. I'm a, I am, but... Perry's, I don't know what they doing <laughs> to make their steak taste the way it tastes, bro. When you eat Perry's steak, you're going to be like moving like, you're going to be like, oh my <laughs> God. Like you, It's like a sexual experience. Damn, like I'm, wait, hold on. Like, bro, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's that good, bro. Like, Yo, it, no, when you go to Perry, <laughs> no, get ready. You got to, if you go, if there's two people, you're going to spend at least a couple hundred. Oh, it's like that. Okay. Yeah, you got, you're going to drop some money. But, Bro, I'm telling you, bro, it's gonna blow you. I didn't know you could make food taste like that. Damn. Like it, I'm perplexed. Like <laughs> I was telling my wife, my wife was like, "Man, I get it. Like you curious how they make it." I'm like, "No, I need to. I need to go back in the kitchen, like peep game. I need to learn what they doing." Anyway, me and my wife, so we went to Perry's, right? And and so like, cause I don't barely eat meat, yeah. and I notice when I eat the meat, 
Like I said, remember, I'm looking at my emotions. I'm looking at myself afterwards over days and to, I'm connecting the dots. Mm -hmm. And so we went to Perry's because she, she went to Perry's and she brought the leftovers home and I tasted it and leftover. Banging. And I was like, Oh my God. Cause she was like, babe, you got to taste this. And I'm like, I don't, I was like, babe, you know, I ain't eating that. She like, no, I'm just, she went there talking about it so good. She up to where like, she sold me. So I was like, all right, let me see. <laughs> and then I was, I tasted it. Yeah. And so then, so we went and we got the steak, whatever we ate the steak. And then when we was on the ride home, next thing you know, we arguing. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then months pass. We go to uh Ruth's Chris. You know about Ruth's oh, Chris? Yeah, I know Ruth's Chris, yeah. Where they bring it out in a hot plate. Yeah, and it's sizzling. Yeah, they, that's fire. Ruth, no, that, that's fire. They Ruth's Chris is almost as good as Perry's. They rock. Wow, Ruth's Chris is good, so I need to try Perry's Perry. even better. Okay. But we went to Ruth's Chris. We leave. Next thing I know, an hour later, we arguing. Mm. And then, but I noticed this before that when it came to meat. And then I started noticing it in other people. Now I'm looking at how, cause I, bro, it's, I got five kids. I got a wife. That's six people I observe on a daily basis that I got. Then plus all the people that I just be around. Mm -hmm. So then I start to observe when they eat and I start to peep their emotions and they mood swings and what they got going on. And so now I just, I'm sold, bro. Like this meat got energy in it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like the butcher game. If you look, you could look at do your own research and look at the documentaries, what's going on with these yeah. animals and how they feed them and the steroids they're doing. And then they just low key raping the female cow to make them Jam pregnant. Just, yeah. uh, and then so it's like, imagine what they feeling in there. And, you know, and then the way they butcher them is inhumane. And it's just, uh, so it's like, it's something about it. So but the point I'm trying to make is, yeah, I, I made the book. My next project is going to be. This is this is step one. You can get back to your natural body size by following these principles and still eat the way you like to eat. Mm -hmm. But once, but what happened for me was once I stayed on that path for a few years, I was then ready to try new things mm -hmm. and start cutting back on the meat. It wasn't as hard for me as it would have been in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that's what my goal is with the rest of my life is to meet people where they're at. And then take a step at a time in the right direction. That that's a, that's amazing. No, Jabez, I it's dope because I feel like I've seen the beginning of this journey when you right. first started making the grocery store videos. It's up to now, right. and just to see how how people are gravitating towards it, yeah. it's amazing. And I yeah. love when we were talking on the phone. You were mentioning like how just you're just showing up and adding value to people's lives. Yeah. And I definitely see that from the book because when you read it, it's like it's it's simple to understand, but they're principles that can really impact your life in a big way right like i one thing i didn't uh know was the the, the leviticus the how they talk about leviticus. what to eat in there so i'm sure there's a lot of christians out there and people who read the bible it tells you what to eat right in right there. in the book right in the bible it blew my mind i read the whole bible um during the pandemic from a different angle and um shout out yahweh ben yahweh he the he the one that opened my i my my i know everything for me my journey started when i started eating better and so it led from one thing to another thing to another thing. So I got to the point where I believe my temple was cleared out enough to be able to accept the knowledge mm -hmm. and really come into the knowledge that Yahweh Ben Yahweh laid down with his life. And um, that is the most valuable knowledge that I've come across to this to date. And so um, I read the, the Bible from a different angle from listening to him so much and so in the book of leviticus it go over diet and hygiene and um it explained how when it comes to meat animals that walk on the ground that's not in water they it has to have hooves and chew of the cud and so i was like what is that i looked it up and that's when an animal like chew the grass up swallow it bring it back up Chew it up, swallow it, bring it back up, chew it up, swallow it. So that's chewing other cud. Mm -hmm. So I was like, huh, so cows do it, deer do it, bison do it, um, sheep, goat, they do it. It's a list of them. And I put What about chickens? Chickens don't chew with a cud, but chickens not, it's a, a chicken, that's fowl. Oh, so fowl. we're talking about animals that walk on the ground. Oh, yeah. Then they go over fowl too, and you're supposed to eat the birds. It, it it break down the birds. I don't go into the birds in this book just because 
I honestly, just because of how dominant the grocery stores are in when it comes to chicken and turkeys. Mm -hmm. You know, like, let's keep it G. It. When it comes to America, if you're eating a bird, it's going to be a chicken or a turkey. Nine out of ten you times. You ain't get no ostrich. Yeah, you might, you might see some goose here and there or a duck, maybe. You know what I'm saying? But, um, and then I just disagree. It's so many steroids getting put into them that I encourage people to stop with the chicken and the turkey. I encourage it. And that's actually, I did have a question because I kind of have been on the not eating meat wave. Yeah. And I've, it's been, honestly, it's been great. But um, I went to, I went back home to Atlanta. I was with my dad and we, like, he can get grass fed meat and all that stuff. And so nice. I, I like but to see, eat the grass fed free range. There and you that go. Makes me feel good. That, that, and this is, and this is the thing. It's like, weigh it out on a scale. If you choose to eat meat, look for the meat that has the most natural experience. Look for the meat that's, and be aware of the ways, you know, Who's killing it? How they killing it? You know, right. if you can, and just seek out the best versions. Because, like I say, if you got a goal to lose weight, you don't got to overcomplicate it. I was eating the chicken and the turkey, and I lost a, a, almost about about a hundred pounds. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? If you like chicken, you can still eat the chicken. Don't stress yourself out. You know what I mean? Take your time. Just start choosing the best versions of what you like to eat. It's more the processed food that got the the weight on us. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um. But because we was talking about the book of Leviticus, so it went over that. So I put that in the book because, like I say, you brought up bringing value. For me, I got to the, I had a mindset shift over two years ago, less than three, where I used bro. You you met me. I was hustling. I've been Grinding. I've been like that since I was fifteen. You know what I'm saying? I'm 39 years old, so I've always been hustling, bro. Like. <laughs> It's like, I got stories for days. Like, <laughs> I tried pretty much everything. So it's like, I, I always chase money. I didn't realize until recently I worshiped money. Mm. I worshiped money. And I, I wasn't, if you would have told me that back then, I would have got, you know, like defensive. I would have felt like you tried me. Like, but it is true because I wasn't putting, I wasn't thinking about what value am I bringing you? I'm thinking about talking you into getting what I got. Mm. There was, there was, I, I, I did value value to an extent but it wasn't my main priority so i shifted my mindset from chasing money to how can i bring value to as many people as possible and from that mindset it took a while but that's when i came with, with the, the roundabout way i came up with the concept of the book mm -hmm. and so from thinking like that i put it into the book and so that's why i put what i learned about the the book of leviticus in there because it's valuable you could lose weight and not follow the dietary guidelines from the book of Leviticus. But I truly believe you're going to miss blessings because what happened was it's the, it's the, it's the, um, the animals with the hooves that you would have cut. And it's also, if it come out of the water, it has to have scales and fins. That's it. Don't eat anything else that come out of the water. If it doesn't have scales and fins, don't eat it. So I, right when I read that in the Bible, the first thing I thought about was soul food and how much we eat catfish. That's the first thing I thought. Catfish I don't have scales? Catfish don't got no oh, scales. Oh, no. I love I, catfish, Trust me, I Googled bro. it. Damn, I love catfish. Catfish don't got no scales, bro. But they're so bottom I, feeders. they bottom feeders, bro. And then I thought, and then I went to thinking about the crabs bottom and the feeders. crustaceans and yeah. the shrimps and the conch. And then I went to looking Damn. at how they look. They look like they look, bugs. They look like roaches. Yeah, bro. And so I was like... <laughs> I was like, I wonder. And then went to saying, like, in the Bible, it break down how you going to miss blessings if you, it's like, mm. it basically, you know, you got to, you got to, it's the way the Bible is worded, but basically it was like, okay, now you know, so if you don't do nothing with it, that's on you. <laughs> like, hey, that's what I got you. from reading it, like, right. do what you want to do, but I'm just telling you. So it was like, so I was like, as I'm reading it, that's what I'm hearing in my head, like, for like, real. Damn, so yeah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, all right, I'm done. All right, okay. I'm, I'm not going to eat nothing out the water that don't have scales and fins. I, I was like, I'm finished. Let me see what happened. Let me just stick to it. Let me just stick to it. I already know. So it ain't like I can't eat things. Like I could still make the fish taste good. I could still eat the beef. I could still eat the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, let me just stick to it and see what happens. Bro, no more than a year. It's probably like nine months after I stopped is when I started writing the book. Mm. Mine was just clear. Everything started just slowly but surely. Like it was a, it was a process. I started that process maybe two years ago. And look where I'm at. And when I say... It's so many blessings that's, bro, like from when I wake up in the morning to when I go to sleep, I got more than enough to do. I, I got more than enough great conversations. I get, it's like 99.8% all good. 
like all my comments on social media be positive. Like all my texting, it be a very, very small percentage of haters, like way, way smaller than most that I notice when in other people. Mm -hmm. And so it's like that, that's that's like a sign of major blessings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know it's all connected, bro. It's, it is. It's all connected, man. So that's why I put that in the book, man. And you know, do what you want to do with oh, it. Oh, that's that's dope. I mean, the, again, the book is crazy. I just love I just I want to drop I don't want to give all the game away. Right. But I love uh, there's another piece I love, the, the danger zone in the grocery store because I never even thought about it's it's scary in the middle. It is. It's real scary in the middle. It is. The the, the middle of the grocery store. That's where all the processed food. Because you, you gotta you gotta really look. Food is supposed to spoil. Like anything that gets took from the source of the life. Like if our our spirit is our source of energy, is a spark that keeps our body moving around. So when our spirit comes out of our body, our body's still like here. Here, yep. And it's, the flesh is still gonna be there. But in time, since that source of energy gone, we're going to start to rot. Decay. And so that's just like fruits and vegetables. Like their source is the roots of the plant. The roots of the plant is the source. Where the seed, you put it in the ground, the seed is the source. And the roots grow from the bottom and the plant grow from the top. Mm -hmm. So that's the energy source right there. And so when you pluck the fruit or the vegetable from the vine or the, or the tree or whatever... You're taking it from the source. It's going to keep living longer than, than and then, but what's so crazy about fruits is they live different than like us. Like when you pluck, pluck it, it's still alive because that's like if you ever take like a mango and it don't be ripe and you put it in the sun, you'll see how it get ripe. Mm -hmm. So that lets you know it's still living. Like fruits is a little bit different, but it's going to turn bad. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. And with, same with the grain, same with the meat, same with everything. So that's the natural order of things. So you got to eat it in that time frame when you're supposed to be. This is the way things have been created. But with the grocery stores, everything has been convenienceized, and it's like people want things to last a long time so they don't lose their profit. Mm -hmm. So then here go all the preservatives, and then they'll put it in the in the explanation to preserve freshness. So you mm -hmm. look at it like, oh well, good. Well, it's they're, they're helping us out. Yeah, that's how I used to think. Well, good, we keep it fresh. I don't want it to go bad. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, you don't think about it. Yeah, no, we let's keep it G. You don't think about it. You don't just, think about it. Like, preserving the freshness. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. It's yeah. in so a can. Great. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not natural, man. And our bodies is our bodies. We can't trick our body. Our bodies is gonna show us the truth of the matter. That's why so many of us overweight. And that's the thing about the process, man. When you, and how you know about processed food, you have to read the ingredients, man. The, the, the ingredients is showing you the process. When you read the ingredients, you'll start to see what's going on. Then start looking up the side effects of these ingredients, man. Mm. Start looking up the side effects for yourself. Weight gain is side, is side effects. Mood swings. Suicide, you'll literally have suicidal thoughts, anxiety, diseases, ADD, conditions. diseases, cancer, yeah. lupus, high blood pressure. It's crazy. No, I think w one thing that the book highlighted for me is like there's a lot of knowledge that we've almost forgotten about the things that we eat in in uh, exchange for convenience and, you know, the food companies more or less taking advantage of people because they know that we don't have time to grow our own food, do our own research, look up all the nutritional facts. So, so they just say, here, take these flaming Hot Cheetos instead. I'm so glad you said that because my two go-to quotes are, you have to love yourself more than the love that you have for the way food tastes. And you have to, and, and, and I was going to explain it earlier because with the way food tastes, right, you can make good food taste good. But it's like uh, you might have a, a taste for uh, jalapenos in the jar. Mm -hmm. I recently read the ingredients of the jalapenos. For some reason, I never read that. And same with relish. Right, you some think reason, it's just jalapenos, right? Bro, it got all type of chemicals in it. So I'm like, you might really want the taste of that jalapenos, but when you love yourself more than the love that you have for the taste, you'll figure something else out to put besides them jalapenos in the jar. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's loving yourself more than the love that you have for the taste. But then it's also, you got to love yourself more than the love that you have for the convenience of unhealthy mm. food options. Because when you start getting on this path, you'll notice when you go in the grocery store, it's like 80, 20, like 80% bad, 20% good, maybe 70, 30 if, or, or 60, 40 if you're in a good store, like a health store. Yeah. And so like you going to be, it's going to be inconvenient to look around for the healthy options. Each section going to have mostly bad options and some healthy options. And so you got to read the ingredients. So you're going to be, you might ch go through six, seven options when you don't know yet. And so it's like, it's going to take you longer to grocery shop. You might be trying to get back to the house to cook for the kids or whatever. So now it's 
unconvenient. But when you love yourself more than the love that you have for the convenience, you'll take the time and do it. And you'll start to strategize your day around. You'll start to, you'll figure it out. You'll give yourself a little more time to grocery shop. You'll, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll figure it out. Because at the end of the day, when you love yourself like that, you put your, your you you really looking at it like man I want to live till I'm a hundred I want to yeah. be there for my great great grandkids I want to set up trust funds I want to I want to figure all this out There's so much I got to figure out There's so much I didn't do I got to do this So I got to I got to I want to have energy I want to be limber You know what I mean I want I want my sex drive to be up I want my wife to be into me I want my kids to respect me You know what I'm saying Like when you love yourself like that. You won't mind the inconvenience. It won't even seem like an inconvenience. But when I started thinking about it different, it started to, I started to like, it was like I was Inspector Gadget in the grocery store. Like <laughs> I'm going around, I'm get, like, I'm like, I'm tripping out at all the bad options. I'm laughing. Like, I'm like, I see it now. Like it's it, it, experience. Like you put some, some like glasses on, you see through all the illusions. Yeah. Now. Like, like it's funny. Like, you know what I'm saying? It ain't hard for me. Yeah. So that's, but that's because that's my mindset. So I did my best to try to like, explain that in the book and I do and like I'm explaining I, I do my because once you shift your mindset it get easy it's yeah. not really that hard it's and not. you just got to stay committed to it you feel me mm-hmm. if you want a copy of this book TikTok I wanted to talk to y'all because you know I love you if you want a <laughs> copy of this book the link is in the bio right you can grab it we sell the information for $44 it will change your life forever I just spent $80 on a tank of gas but I'm running a discount until Monday midnight 50% off on the book if you text um Life, matter of fact, no, no, no. If you, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. If you text natural to 786 650 8781, I'll send you a link for 50% off on the book. Now, if you go back a couple posts, you'll see on the description, you'll see where it say text life to 786 650. Don't text that number because that's a 35% discount. Text natural to that same number and I'll shoot you a 50% discount and we'll be locked in. You'll be able to, if you got any questions, you can hit me up, man. I'm answering the phone. He responds. Yeah. He responds to it too. He ain't Hollywood. It might take me, it might take me a minute to get to you, but I'm going to get to you. I'm going to get to you. I'm going to respond. No, that's dope. You know what I mean? Yo, I appreciate you coming on here and talking about the book, Jabez. I read the whole book. It was, it was great. It gives you not only just a, a guide on, you know, how to eat right, but you know, a piece of you too. You share your yeah. story and I think that really hits home because it's relatable for people. Right, and right. so I'm excited. Uh people who watch this podcast are gonna get the fifty percent off discount too. Yeah. Yeah. So Smoky Mirror Podcast on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube. We yeah. locked in. It's gonna be great. Yeah. And make sure to subscribe to my brother channel, man. Cause like I say, I see where you at now and I know where you're going, bro. All you gotta do is just keep do just keep going. Yeah. His partner back here on the on the stick back here. Handling business, Eat and I, I love their grind. Shout out your um clothing brand, Scott, baby. And uh, man, like I, I already because it's what you represent. And I know it's just a matter of time. You still how, how old you is again, bro? Twenty five. Still young, twenty five years old. So now it's like get in now in the beginning, and you'll be able to see the growth. This is the best part of the movie, you know, like right like Scarface, like you know, when it be like <laughs> yeah, when he was like still struggling. But he just was like getting in the game and then it's like the come up, he got the montage going. Yeah. That's where Brad at right now. That's where both of us at really. No, for real. So it's the best time to get plugged and that's why in. And see how the we journey. linked up like that. Yeah. And I see the because you know, once you master something like your diet, it translates into other parts of your life. And so it's like, well, if I can stay consistent with my diet, I can stay consistent with my podcast or yeah. you know, my book or my clothing brand or whatever it is that you're working on. Bingo. That's so major dope. life skill, man. Well, you know what? As always, Jamez, it's, it's great. Love. You know, I appreciate respect, you. We man. finished right on time. That's, beautiful, beautiful, yo, man. It's amazing. all love, man. TikTok, we'll check you out later. Hey, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already know what time it is, man, you know?